we're gonna look at six next level knives. Wow, that took a long time to say. This is the Rockstead He Goat. It's gonna be the first one we look at, but not yet. So I went through and I found six knives that are, I find them to be next level. Some of them you've seen, a couple of them you haven't. Some of them I'm doing this video because I wanted to get it in early because this has got to go back to its owner soon. So we're going to look at these. This is going to be the first one we look at. So let's get all this stuff out of the way. So guys, I did a short about this next level knife. This is the Rockstead Higo in ZDP-189 and titanium. We got new lights. I'm trying to get better lighting so you guys can see this better. This thing's amazing. Look, hey, there's me. Look, there's the lights. Look, there's the other lights. Yeah, this thing is incredible. So this is the Higo 2. These were done in titanium and ZDP-189. There's two different steels. They use YRX and ZDP-189. This happens to be in ZDP-189, which is an incredible steel if it's done really well. This is at 66.6 .6 Rockwell. There is no... There is no knife that's going to compare to this. This is the pinnacle of the production knives. Now, I do, there are knives that are more functional. There are knives that I find better. But as far as all around, like just level of detail, you're not going to beat a Rockstead. And it, it just, it's, it's a company culture. I don't know what it is. Now, I would not, this would not be a knife for me. This knife is so beautiful and so well done. I would, I would trash this if I used it for a lot of the ways that I use knives. And the other reason is like, I, I, I can't repair that finish. And even if I sent it back, I don't think they would ever get it quite the way it was. But beautiful knife. The action on it is incredible. This is not fall shut. It's not a flipper. But it is... Imagine the, the action, that hydraulic action you get on a... Um, on a Chris Reeves Sabenza. That hydraulic action. Now smooth that out even more it it's very similar to a, a sabenza only it's amplified I, I don't know if that has to do with the the rockwell hardness of the steel or the type of phosphor bronze washers that they use in this uh i'm not sure uh but i do know it is amazing uh everything is just about perfect on it uh, it is a little slippery if your hands are slippery this is this is the problem i have with this finish it does feel a little slippery but no, you are looking at the peak of what I would say a knife collector would look for in a production knife. These are production. They, they are production. These are uh, these kind of bridge that gap between a custom and a production. But yeah, there you go. So there's our first one. The Rockstead Higo in ZDP-189 and titanium, which that's a new material for them. The Higo 2s were done in, with some in titanium. So there's your first one, the Rockstead Higo. Two. Next knife we're going to look at is a more affordable option. This is the CMB Made Knives Spear. There we go. So this is an S35BN. This is a very, very cool knife. Um, you guys have not seen First Day in Pockets on this. You've only, you haven't, I don't think you've even seen the unboxing yet, to tell you the truth, because things that I film don't always go up in order. I wanted to get this done because there's some knives on this list that wouldn't go out. But this thing is really cool. Super light. Both of the CMB made knives that I've had come in, ultra, ultra light, because if you look, that carbon fiber inlay goes all the way through. I think it is screwed in from the back. I have never <laughs> I've never seen that really to tell you the truth and uh like it and I don't when I say screwed in I mean it is like the full size piece all the way in and pinched by some screws as you see there very interesting very cool very light nice blade shape well done um fit, fit and finish on it is great in hand it's really comfortable the action is great if you I do have a hard time with the reverse flick on this because it's very tight and small, but the fact is you can thumb roll it out. Uh, really comfortable in hand. Nice, thin, thin blade. It comes down almost like uh, the CMB made knives was Knight. The CMB Knight was another one. Super, super thin behind the edge. This does the same thing. Comes down nice and thin on relatively robust blade stock with a lot of facets. Looks really cool. I've had this in and out of pocket a couple times. Uh, I still have not edited the first day in pockets, but it is uh, a very that, bump the button. What I was saying, it's a very good looking knife, easy to carry, nice and light pocket clip, not an issue at all. 
This is one of those knives that I think is, I, I just don't see how I miss this company. Uh, I, I, I've, the two knives I've seen so far have been great. Um, really well done carbon fiber, stuff like that. So is it next level as far as material and craftsmanship and stuff like that? No, but the way they're doing it and how light this is and how well done it is for price point on a lot of these knives, I'm pretty impressed. So that kind of makes it next level for me. And it just looks cool, doesn't it? It looks like something out of a science fiction. It looks like a spaceship. So there you go. The CMB made spear. Guys, I hate to interrupt the video because I know we're having fun, but I do have to do the YouTuber thing and remind you that this channel is spelled self-sponsored with all the affiliate links and stuff you see down below. Anything from knives, tools, EDC gear, and uh, Blade HQ, anything, all the Amazon links, they all support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. So I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Now let's go back to the knives. You guys knew that this was gonna make it into the video. This is that Winter Blade Co. Uh, Winter Blades uh, factor. Now, the reason this is next level is there's no springs in this. The springs and things you would expect to see in this knife, like on the lock itself, that action is accomplished by magnets. There is no detent ball. That detent is accomplished, once again, by magnets. And what you get is a very cool feel. The detent on it feels like nothing else I've ever handled. The lock doesn't feel like anything else I've ever handled, and it definitely does not sound like any knife I've ever had on the channel right there just that so your lock does not have a spring and so it just sits there there is a there is a flipper right here that you can use that is also held in place by once again you guessed it magnets in place this is probably one of the coolest new knives i've seen in a long time Carbon fiber, titanium, M390 steel. So it's not just gimmicky. It is performance materials. There is a piece that's supposed to go there. Jared told me he lost it. The blade on it is ground in exceptionally well. This, this thing, it's, I have not done first hand pockets on this yet. So it's been hard not to put in my pocket, but I have done a little bit of play cutting with it. Like just testing it out, opening packages and things like that. Really good blade. Awesome. Amazing knife. And I'm, I'm digging it a lot. So, you know, it's just one of those things that like these new innovations, I, this may have ruined a lot of other knives for me just because of that. And I don't mean the sound. It definitely has a sound, but there's a feel to that, that you just, until, until you felt one, it doesn't quite feel like anything else, but yet it still feels familiar. It definitely feels like a sliding bar lock, which it kind of is. It definitely has that same feel. You definitely can have the same reverse flick action. And now you have a flipper tab where I don't, you know, I probably wouldn't use it. I know that there's a part you can get for this that, that basically fills this spot and makes it a non-flipper only reverse flick only. I would be fine with that. Incredible. This thing is amazing. And like I said, I, I feel as though it has kind of ruined some other knives for me because I'm going to, for the rest of the time that I own knives, think, why doesn't it make that sound because not only do you have the tink check out the lock when it first starts to disengage that little click so when you first do it you get a double you get a little double sound and it is really really awesome so super light super great comes packaged well there's a lot of thought that went into this I, i'm really impressed i thought this was gonna be something gimmicky i am really impressed with how that it almost feels assisted if you just lightly break the detent, it almost feels assisted at, when, when you do it. So there you go, guys. The Winter Blades Factor. Our next knife that is next level. I know you guys have seen this already. And it, it has nothing to do with the materials or anything. But one, look at it. It looks futuristic and stuff like that. But the other thing is this knife, uh, the Riat Exos, uh, Exoskeleton Gravity Knife, brought back some of the fun to the knife stuff. There was a big mark change in the way I looked at stuff when I got this. Um, this brought back a lot of the fun fidgety funness of the knife stuff that had kind of worn away. I mean, I see so many knives and then to get something that is so much fun and still so well done. You know, usually when you get these, they're poorly made. This is not. Quality materials, titanium, micarta, LMAX steel, beautifully ground blade, and just the fact that they did such a good job of making a gravity knife that was still simple, 
and usable and better than any of the gravity knives I've ever seen. And do it on a quality level where you're getting a quality made product, quality made knife, and it still came out looking amazing. Look at that. That looks like, this looks like something that someone uh, in on a Star Trek move, uh, Star Trek show, or you know, one of those space, you know, uh, Deep Space Nine or, or Stargate, something like that. That looks like something that one of the enemies would have. Uh, but the fact is, it is really cool. It's really well made, and it's really functional. Um, not so much as an EDC item, but as like. Uh, as something that you can use, it's really close quarters. I'm trying to flick it out. Um, something you can use if you needed to in a tactical sense, but still also just so much fun. Um, it's like having a fidget toy in your pocket all the time or having it around. I typically don't fidget with knives because it's hard on them. This was designed for that. They're, you're not doing anything to this. The fact is, too, that like a lot of people are, well, if you get it halfway, you're going to crush down on your edge. You don't. The way it's built, it is genius in how they did it in its simplicity. It is just a simple slide track <laughs> with, with an extra armature. Your pivot is all the way back here. Your blade slurts forward. This is your lock. It's great. You are the lock. It's simple. It's plain. It is, it's not a great like EDC functional knife, but it is a lot of fun. And for something to bring back that level of enjoyment in stuff to me, that was pretty next level on its own. And plus, just look at it. It is really cool. So I love this knife. I, I thought maybe I would get it and then do it as a giveaway or sell it. I, I don't think so. I love having this around. It spends a lot of time as just this. When, I, when I'm brainstorming and trying to figure out what I want to do, that's what I spend a lot of time doing. So there you go. The XO Skeleton Gravity Knife by React. All right, guys. Here's another knife you haven't really seen yet on the channel. I've, start, I've already done the uh, filming the first day in pockets. But this is the Kubi monster dog and this knife i mean while it's really simple and it's not super expensive it is kind of next level it first of all it looks really unique great action this thing is awesome i think this might be one of the if you don't mind a bigger bulkier knife this might be a perfect work knife for a lot of people because it fits so many different dimensions you can get up on it like this like if you have to do some cutting back towards yourself you can get up on it like this and it's secure if you need to do some detail cutting you can get up on that like that and do some detail cutting you've got really comfortable grips it's it's really one of the most functional small knives I've had come in and I say small but it is a beefy package uh really well done uh, Kubi's knives have really stepped it up since the first one. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the first Kubi I ever had to this when we when we get ready to do the, the, the video. I've already filmed it, but I'm just letting you know what's going to be in it. So, yeah, thumb stud action on it is great. You've got really good jimping. It is not got a fuller or not, not, I'm not sorry, not a fuller, but uh, it's not got a choil or a finger guard because you don't have a flipper, but it really feels secure because the position it winds up in, your thumb pushes that down almost like a pivot, and it's really comfortable in hand. Pocket clip doesn't dig in or anything. The action on it is great, thumb studs only, and you have that big blade that folds down into this relatively. Short, it's kind of a short stubby knife, but it doesn't feel small. It doesn't feel too small for your hand. It really feels your hand well. And it just looks really futuristic and cool. It's kind of a next level look. Uh, but I'm definitely digging these knives that have got these lanyard apertures built into the backspacer as opposed to a hole. So yeah, Kubi has been kind of knocking it out of the park lately. Yet another one that I really like. So um, I wish I could get Kubi to... Uh, to kind of send me stuff like they do Jared, that would be great. I'm trying to trying to get that figured out, but uh, it would be nice to see a lot more of the Kubi stuff just because I've really gotten to where I like it. Them and, uh, what was it, Ganzo. Some of the Ganzo stuff, the newer stuff. Yeah, thumb sets look like, they look like knobs. That's, they look exactly like, like power knobs or something you would turn. So yeah, a lot of fun, really cool looking. The Kubi Monster Dog. And our final offering here. I do I do have something I wanted to show. This first. This isn't so much a next level knife. This is that uh, Roach. Um, the Kaiser Roach. Uh, mini Roach that Jared sent me. And I don't know how many of you guys realize this. The, the flipper tab is removable on this. And that's not necessarily next level. But that is kind of a next level idea. So this knife isn't really next level. It's a great knife. But it is definitely 
kind of cool it has this. But this is the knife we're looking at. This is the Ferrum Forge Spinner collab with Mike Gavick. And not only, I'm not just saying that because it's uh, a Ferrum Forge and that it's been completely redone. This knife is pretty next level. It is an awesome folder, really good ergos, comfortable in hand, one of the best cutting knives I own. Yes, I do use all my knives, even this expensive, expensive Maker's Choice $1,200, $1,300 Ferrum Forge. Um, but you have a very good look. I've never had to do anything to this knife um, since I got it. Um, you've got rolling detent, steel lock bar insert, insane level of detail in the uh, carving that Elite did on the outside. Beautiful 20 CV blade that's ground really thin. Probably one of the most perfect opening apertures in any knife. That is probably one of the most perfect you know, reverse flick apertures ever. The Ferrum Forge typical awesome awesome pocket clip this one's a little or not pocket clip, flipper tab awesome it, it sticks out a little bit further than a lot of the others but definitely awesome blade shape super thin comes down and it is a gorgeous multifaceted blade that looks like a clip point has almost a tonto-esque shape to the blade and then just then we can talk about all the the carving so these were all hand done scales with a 132nd ball end mill that Elliot put into a Dremel. All this was carved by hand by Elliot. I know you've seen videos that I've done in the past of Elliot carving. And then the beautiful anodization, the two-tone anodizing that Christopher did on this. It's just beautiful, beautiful blade finish with that, that multicolor ceramic. Um, it definitely is one of those knives that not only is it striking, but the performance that you get in this knife just with the raw horsepower, with the really good curved grip, drops in hand beautifully up into that forward finger choil, heavy duty use knife. Man, just great, truly next level. So there you go, guys. There was six next level knives. Now, don't be surprised when I'm not wearing my typical hat because, well, the Howells hat was dirty and needed a wash, so it's drying. We're wearing a demolition ranch hat in the outro. So let's turn this around, do some final thoughts. So there you go, guys, there was six. Next level knives, it's fun. It's fun, it drives my wife nuts. That's why it lives out here in the garage. So there you go, guys, that was it. I know we're not wearing this hat. I had to wash the Howells hat. It, it smelled bad. I put it on this morning and I was like, what's that smell? It smells like a foot. It was my hat, because I sweat a lot. So need to get a new one. But I can wash it a couple times. All right, guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. Please try to tell me why. I can't change the content. If you don't, tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you've got notifications turned on your device or you will not get notified of the nine videos, five shorts and three live feeds that go up every week. Uh, not to mention the stuff that's in the comments section and stuff that we do off of YouTube on the Gilded server for the members, which we'll get into in a second. Guys, if you do want to support the channel financially, however, there's a bunch of ways. I've set up a lot of affiliate links down below. It's recommended stuff, gears, uh, gear and stuff like that I talked about in the middle of the video. Uh, a lot of stuff that supports the channel. If you can't find what you're looking for on the Amazon links, then check the Blade HQ link. Uh, you can probably find it there. But anything you purchase with those Amazon links, even if it's not the one that you clicked on, still supports the channel. So I would ask if you can do some shopping. Use my affiliate links. Other ways you can do it, I have a membership down below. It's tier-based. Pick a tier that gets you what you want. Everyone saves $5 off my sharpening uh, service. Everyone has access to the Gilded server. Baseline and premium tier members are entered into giveaways on the Gilded server automatically. They don't have to do anything. And uh, the premium tier guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series I've built for them. Uh, and the final way you can do it is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. Anything you purchase on Ember Shirt Co., I can save you 10% at checkout with the coupon code Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, that's it. I love y'all. Keep it clean in the comments section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you next time.